Hi, hello, my name is Gomer Joseph. I hope you've all been having a great day so far. Welcome back to another True Crime Tuesdays video. If you are new, I welcome you. Before I discuss today's case, I'd like to mention my Christian suspense book series, Never As It Seems. The first book in the series is 99 cents on Amazon, but you will be able to read it for free if you have Kindle Unlimited, which is like a streaming service for Amazon books. There is like a 30 day, a 30 day free trial or a two month deal, which is 99 cents, but will eventually turn into 9.99 each month. If you're interested, the link will be in the description box. Now today I'll be discussing the tragic death of Sandra Bland. And the question is, was her death caused by suicide or murder? I remember this case well when it first was being spoken about and I never really knew what to think about it. Like when I decided to dig in like a little deeper into it, I found some surprising and disturbing information which I'm sure will shock you if you've never really um, paid attention to this case. Now I know that her death sparked a lot of political debates which I truly believe is wrong like somebody's death shouldn't be politicized and any talk about it should just stick with that person alone now i encourage y'all to do your own research with this case not just look at my video for all the information so here we go sandra bland was born on february 7th 1987 in naperville illinois to par um, parents geneva reed veal but I do know that um, Sandra, um, her mother pretty much raised her and her four other um, sisters all by herself. Now, Sandra also went by Sandy and people describe Sandra as someone who is strong, intelligent, helpful, well-spoken, bold, full of energy, but unfortunately did suffer from depression. She did play instruments, she enjoyed playing these instruments like the trombone, and she was a member of the Sigma Gamma Rho sorority in Prairie View and m University, which is an HBCU, and she studied agriculture. Sandra also posted a series of videos called Sandy Speaks, where she spoke about family, police brutality, and race issues. On July 8th, 2015, Sandra was planning to make a trip to Texas, and she did make this trip, but it was for a, you know, she went on her own because she had this job interview. On July 10th, 2015, Brian Insignia pulled Sandra over for a failure to turn signals when she was on her way to buy groceries. Now, it, this video, it's a lot to really discuss. So if you really, if you haven't seen it and you want to see it, I mean, it's available on YouTube for those who, for those of you who actually want to go ahead and watch it. Now, there was a, what I'm going to call an uncomfortable exchange of words between Sandra and Brian and Brian asked Sandra to get out and to this day I don't understand why he asked her to get out the car if they were just having an exchange of words because he only pulled her over for you know failure to turn her signals and you know all she really had to do was just sign a ticket so I mean like to this day like I still don't understand why she was pulled out the car. And trust me, like, I understand that she could have stayed silent, but I mean, that's not the person that Sandra was. She couldn't just stay silent because if she did, she would have been able to, you know, move along and she'd possibly be alive today. But pretty much understanding from experience, like, I could, I could, like, once again, like, I can understand that things could have moved more smoothly, but it's easier to say you won't do something until you're in that position yourself so when sandra refused to step out um brian opened her door telling her that she was under arrest then proceeded to take a taser out on her telling sandra that he will light her up giving sandra no choice but to do as officer brian said now just a reminder he pulled her over initially for a failure to turn 
signals. She was recording the exchange with her phone, but Brian told her to put the phone down and continue to handcuff Sandra, which she was being angered by. Another officer who was female came by and by that time was pinned to the ground, stated that she couldn't wait to sue the police department. There was a bystander who recorded and uh, recorded the video and it did go viral. Um, there was also like a police dash cam video, but it didn't really get the side that she was being arrested in because, uh, again, like you'll have to go ahead and see the video because I can go on and on about that video. On July 13, 2015, um, you know, a few days after Sandra had been in jail, unfortunately, she had been found hanging in her cell by a trash bag wrapped around her neck. Of course, the family was notified and they were absolutely devastated. And then, you know, even before this, like, of course, the Sandra's video went viral. They already knew about this situation. So they already, you know, worried about her being in another state, being in a jail cell with this viral video and I can only, like I can really only imagine what that family was like I, I don't know I can't imagine what like all the rush of emotions that were going on at that time because first you see this viral video of your loved one being handcuffed by the police and now you're getting news that your loved one is no longer living Sandra's family would hire an attorney and as the investigation progressed they did see pictures of her dead body in the cell, but no picture of her hanging. To me, at first, and to her family, that was kind of sketchy, but I do believe, you know, it's a possibility that someone could have taken her off to see if there was a chance of reviving her, and that's what the police have explained. Her family also wondered where she got the trash bag from and mentioned something worth thinking of because inmates are supposed to be free of any and all objects that would cause them any harm and Sandra had no cellmates at all during her time in the jail cell. Earlier on when Sandra called her family, one of her sisters stated that Sandra complained of pain from her arm because of the arrest. I'm gonna get back to um, the trash bag soon so bear with me. Her death was ruled a suicide, which baffled her loved ones because though they knew about Sandra's depression, she was known to be a fighter and her family let her know that uh, they would post the $500 bail for her as soon as they could. Before getting Sandra's body back to Illinois, the family ordered a private autopsy. Another thing which is sketchy is that when there was more investigation into this, Sandra was said to be arrested for assaulting Officer Brian. Now mind you, Brian asked her to step out of the car before their encounter even got a chance to be physical. So at least to me, that's pretty sketchy. Soon enough, social media took notice of Sandra's death and started this hashtag say her name campaign, which influenced protests to occur. The autopsy, not the private one, stated that there were drugs in her system, like marijuana. But that's really weird to me because she was smoking a cigarette when Officer Brian stopped her. And there was evidence that she put it out even when she told Brian that she didn't need to put it out since she was smoking in her own car. So how on earth did she even obtain marijuana in jail in the first place? Unless, I mean, I could be wrong. Like, let me know if I'm wrong, but unless marijuana can stay in your system for that long. Like, I, when the private autopsy was done, it stated that Sandra didn't die because of a hanging but from a blunt force applied to her upper back. Back to the trash bag, remember that? What truly surprised me was that her fingerprints weren't even on the trash bag. And they said that she killed herself, that she killed herself with that trash bag. Like houseway, like, uh, and again, prove me if I'm wrong. Unless you touch a trash bag and you can't like, and there's some scientific way that your fingerprints can't go on a trash bag. Like, that really made me shook. But regardless of all that, the police department stated that the marijuana could have influenced her suicide. But I'm still questioning how she even 
got the marijuana in the first place. Also, when Sandra was in custody, they did ask if she attempted to commit suicide before, and she admitted it, also explaining how she unfortunately lost a baby, and, I mean, she had a mis- I mean, yeah, a miscarriage, you lose a baby. And the department's theory was that she felt she wouldn't get a good job because of getting this felony, which could have influenced this suicide. But when they asked if she planned on doing it in jail, Sandra answered no. This isn't really the best question that you ask a suicidal person. Like, you can even, like, ask somebody in the medical field. They should have asked, do you have a plan in order to prevent her from killing herself? And surprise, surprise, behold, another sketchy detail. Cannon Lambert, the lawyer helping Sandra's family, was being left death threats. I mean, if Sandra really killed herself, I don't see how it should ever be that, de that deep as to threaten someone else's life. Something which confused me is that it's been shown that there were blanks in the jail logs of Sandra's stay, you know, at this Texas jail, and the district attorney even admitted it shouldn't have been filled out like this and there was false information and that the jailer didn't even see Sandra. So you've, I mean, uh, at least to me, I think you've got to admit that's pretty weird. The grand jury did indict Officer Brian for perjury, but pretty much got a minimal sentence of one year. Sandra's family would have at least have liked for him to be charged with assault and battery as well. Her family also did file a lawsuit against the police department and they received $1.9 million and promise of police reform, which I highly support. What do you believe? Do you believe that Sandra's death was a suicide or do you believe that it was murder? Please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section. Once again, I know that this case in particular is a pretty touchy subject. I do not want to see name calling or disrespect in the comment sections. If I do, I will personally make sure to block you for all eternity. As for Sandra's family, I do pray for them. It can't be easy living with the thought knowing that they've been without Sandra for this long and five years to be exact. Her life ended way too soon and no matter what happened, like she was 28 years old and like that's like a few years older than I am so like she had such a short life and no matter what happened it's a tragedy that she had to die alone far away from those she loved the God that I serve the God of the Bible is a God of justice if justice needs to be served God will make sure that it will be served I thank you all for taking the time in your day to watch this video if you did like this video please hit the like button once again if you have any thoughts on this case please leave your thoughts in the comment section if you'd like to see more videos from me feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about the next video if there's a certain true crime case that you'd like me to cover let me know i'll see you all for the next true crime tuesdays i will talk to you all later